Today's video, we're going to be giving you a free West Coast offensive ebook out of the West Coast Playbook in Madden 24. It's going to be a full ebook with audibles and uh, settings as well as play breakdowns. Now, if you enjoy this ebook, you're going to love the ebooks on our Patreon page. So if you're not a Patreon member yet, that's only $10 and it gets you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks. The first thing we want to optimize when we're playing uh, Madden is we want to make sure that we have the best settings. So for this ebook, what I recommend is placement and power, the near five out of 20 for freeform reticle speed. And then uh, really everything else is fine. This more defensive settings, but those are the settings that you need to set. And then we're going to get into the audible. So for Gun Bunch, the audibles that we're going to be setting here is we're going to be uh, putting in our audibles. They play mesh post. We're going to put the play deep corner, and then we have verticals and corner strike. The other formation that we want to set some audibles for here are the tight slots formation. For this, we have the audible PA wide receiver seam set. We have the audible um, bench switch set, and then we're going to be putting in the audible uh, bench, if I can find it, not bench swap, wide receiver corners. Looking for the right corner route. Let me see if I can find it. I guess I don't have it in this playbook. So yeah, we're just going to go with those corner routes and then uh, PA X clown and then the halfback mid draw. Okay, so we're going to just set uh, the PA if I can find it here, uh, the PAX Clown as our tight slots audibles. And then kind of a fun little running scheme here at a, at a gun tray open that we're going to be going over in this ebook. We're going to go with the uh, halfback counter as our run audible to the left. We're going to go with the 56 trap as our run audible to uh, the right. And then we have the play four verticals with a nice little crossing route. And then really the last audible here is kind of up to you, whatever you want to do. I really like uh, the play, if I could find it here. Um, I think I passed it. Y corner because it has a corner route and a C route. You could also go with FL dig, which also has a C route. But I really like if you if you don't need that corner route, like let's say you have Hara Master, then you can go FL dig. I'm going to be going Y corner, or you could even go read option as well. So we're actually going to set read option here as the run audible to the middle, and then we're going to have a Y corner over the four verticals because of the C route, and then we're going to have the play uh, 56 trap. So those are our gun tray open uh, offset audibles for this scheme. And then the next set of audibles that I really like to do is the West Coast Playbook has really good under center run game. So we're going to go with the halfback stretch out of the gun doubles or the single back doubles. We're going to go with the halfback dive out of the single back doubles. Uh, or I'm sorry, we're going to go halfback slam. I apologize. And then if you go through here, a couple other plays that I really like. I really like the tight end post. Uh, which is like a nice little route combo we can do for some red zone setups. And then the last red zone audible that I like to set, or the last under center audible is a PA double, uh, PA double post. And then you're going to do the same basic thing with the trips. Uh, single back Y trips has, I think it has a stretch. I might be passing it up. Maybe I didn't see it. Okay. It doesn't have a stretch. So we're going to avoid uh, this formation. Not going to really worry about that. And then gun or single back doubles open. I think, does this one have a bubble screen? Uh, yeah, it does. Let me find it. Bubble screen here, and then halfback dive, and then uh, pretty much everything else is kind of as is. So these are kind of my main audibles for this scheme. The uh, two running back sets in West Coast, I think, are the best two running back sets in the game. There's so much that you can do from this. We're actually going to be doing a separate ebook on the pro personnel out of West Coast. So it's an ebook that I do every single year. It's my favorite uh, ebook that I ever, ever do uh, because it's how I started in Madden with the far tight slot was the kind of the first formation that I mastered. So we're going to do a full ebook on that. But for now, that's going to be it for the audibles. So in terms of personnel and our base formation, we're going to be coming out in Gun Bunch every single time. Now, you can run this uh, ebook whether you are in regs, in MUT, or in CFM. I'm going to be showing it in regs, but you can literally run this regardless of really anything. But I did want to quickly point out the best abilities for this scheme. First and foremost, from a personnel perspective, you want your best receiver to be your slot receiver. So for us, we're going to be putting Marquez of uh, a scantling in the slot of this formation. And then from there, it's really up to you. Um, I like to have a fast receiver here on the left. Basically, speed is what we're looking for. There are certain route running thresholds. For example, if I think if you're playing all mad, I think it's 85. And if you're playing all pro, I believe it's 90. You just want to hit the route running thresholds. Um, but really outside of that, you want to prioritize speed. And then the other thing that we want to really recommend is set feet lead. If you can get a quarterback with set feet lead, it automatically 10 X's your offense every single year, especially this year. So uh, quarterback with set feet lead. And then um, if you can't do that, then hot route master. 
those are kind of the ability priorities for this scheme. And then we're going to get into our first breakdown of the play stick. One last quick thing that I forgot to mention, unless we otherwise specify in the ebook, we're going to be making sure that we're always running our bunch to the wide side of the field. So for the first play that we're going to be going over in this ebook, we're going to be talking about the play stick. It's one of the best plays in Madden every single year, and in this year is no different. The only thing you're going to be doing for our setup for this play is we're just going to streak the slot receiver on the right side of the screen, and then we're going to snap the ball. Our first read is always this quick little flat. If we can take 5, 10 yards every single time, it's going to force them to have to put some hard flats over there, and it's just a great little quick flat read. One of the cool things that you can actually do this year that you couldn't do last year is when you throw a flat route, you don't really you can you can actually highball this, um, which we could do that last year. But you see, he doesn't get as good of rack animations as he actually got last year. But what you can do with this is you can freeform this outside, and when you rack catch it, he'll actually kind of run up field a little bit better. So again, the flat route we could talk for hours on flat routes, but just understand that you're it's a quick read for you, and if you if you do have the separation, throw it. Now, one of the best routes on this play is actually this corner route, and there is a little bit of a tip for this. If that corner route is not pressed and man coverage, when he cuts the outside, he's going to kind of get that super win animation majority of the time, especially if he hits the route running thresholds uh, that we specified earlier in the ebook. But what you're going to see, he gets that sharp cut, absolutely torches the defender, and we're able to throw that against man coverage. Now, this play is not the best play. It's not the end all be all for man coverage. There are better plays that we're going to be going over later in this ebook for that. But the other thing that I wanted to say about man coverage specifically is if you look to the left hand side of the screen, this slant route is uh, going to get inside leverage against man coverage. Most of the time, Kadarius Tony actually got completely owned there. This is honestly why I would rather break stuff down in mutt because you have better route running and they just like it just the 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 routes run better against man coverage. That being said, that should be an easy read for you if you, you know, it's just something that I wanted to show. One of the most popular things people will do over here on the left side is they'll actually put this guy in an outside third. Uh, and you'll notice that it will be a little bit easier to throw that route. So that's the main purpose of that route. And a lot of times if they're in cover two or cover one, as soon as he cuts inside, he should. It's, it's crazy how bad Kadarius Tony is running the slant route. It is crazy how bad he is running the slant route right now. Um, so we're actually going to flip the play. Uh, we're going to flip the play here. And the reason why is just because I cannot stand the fact Kadarius Tony is getting r like owned in man coverage. If we look to the right here, you see that slant route, a little quick read against man coverage. That's going to just force their user to have to be over there on that side. Now, if they do press, if they go ahead and press their man-to-man -man coverage, one of the, the couple different options you have here, but the first things first is this corner route it still can beat man coverage to the sideline. I would say that it's a little bit more inconsistent than it was before. So that's just something you got to understand about this play is that if they are pressing their coverage, you might, you know, you might not be able to throw this, but what I like to do with this, um, is freeform and high point this up into the outside if I see a press man-to-man -man coverage. So the reason we are doing that is because if we freeform and high point it, that's holding L2 and L1 at the same time, it's going to put the ball where only a receiver can catch it, and it's going to give you a big chance for a big play against that. Now, there's some other plays, as I said, that are a little bit better for man coverage, but that, those are kind of the main reads. Now, I did want to quickly cover... Uh, cover zero coverage real quick. So if you do run up against some cover zero coverage, typically the streak route to Marquez Vadas Scantling is going to be a potential one play score for you or your slant. As you see right there, the slant route's able to get open on the left hand side. Please notice that the running back, when the running back blocks, uh, when we run this play against cover zero, if the running back blocks, there's a logic in this game where that safety will automatically kind of revert into a middle third. So if the safety reverts into the middle third, then obviously we can't throw, you know, the streak route. However, if we were to kind of know that this is coming, one of the things we could do is just put our running back on a block and release route. And a lot of times what you will see here is it will be enough to hold that safety in the middle. And then you can throw this streak for a touchdown. I want to quickly break down exactly what you just saw in instant replay to explain the purpose of the block and release route to the running back. So if we go into instant replay, what you're going to see here, I put the running back on a block and release route, and he actually, because of there's pressure, he is going to stay in to block. If you look at this safety, though, because he's manned up on the running back, the man-to-man -man logic communicates to him that he has to stay on the running back route, and therefore, now we're able to throw that route 
over the top. Super, super important uh, in terms of our ability to, and capabilities to beat cover zero. Now, what some people will do with their cover zero is they will not press their cover zero. That does not mean you cannot throw this route. What you're going to see is, for some reason, whenever he kind of gets over the top, you can freeform this up and over the top, and a lot of times he's going to be able to get over the top of the defender. All you're going to do is just freeform that up and to the right, and uh, a lot of times you're going to be able to get separation against man-to-man -man coverage, even if they're not pressed up. So let's talk about zone coverage. Sticks really good against man, but it's actually better against zone coverage. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about a baseline press cover four, which is probably the best way to play zone coverage right now. What you're going to look for here is basically this little short corner route is going to do a really good job of getting this outside leverage. And the really cool part about this is the ability meta in Ultimate Team is going to tell people that they're going to need to put deep out zone knockouts on their corners, if they do put those deep out zone knockouts on their corners, that's not going to activate because of how short of a corner route stick is. It's actually a medium. Um, they're going to need a mid zone knockout to be able to properly defend this in zone coverage. So if it is cover four hard flat or if it's cover three hard flat, you're going to be able to pretty much throw this every single time. And really more, more times than not, what people are going to do in those coverages is they're going to press their coverage. So you see here, he presses his coverage and now I'm able to throw this and be able to, you know, make that catch gift wrapped is another really, really good ability for this offense because it's just going to make sure that they can catch these contested catches a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, uh, regularly. Okay. So again, here, here's the baseline press cover four. And you see here, you're just going to have to kind of trust it. But once he gets outside, once he kind of gets to that sideline area, that's where the short corner really does a good job. Now, let's talk about cover three real quick. And I did want to talk about one thing that you might see in a cover three. One of the defenses, if you're playing online, is a lot of people like to run stock cover three with curl flats. What you're going to notice with this route is when we run this with our bunch to the wide side of the field, the curl flat defender is not going to be able to defend the tight end route. And he's also not going to be able to defend the corner route. So you're able to actually attack both coverages um, with the same route combination. So you see here again, we're just going to wait on this separation and we can throw this consistently against a cover four or a cover three. Now I did want to talk about the one coverage that will give this coverage or this play a little bit of trouble. So the one coverage that will give this play a little bit of trouble is cover two. And the reason why is because that cloud flat defender, if you look to the right hand side of your screen, he can uh, kind of cover this. This is another reason why it is very helpful to run your bunch to the wide side of the field. Because one of the things that's kind of unique about stick is if they're not base aligned and pressing uh, if they're not base aligning their cover two coverage, that uh, corner route can actually outrun. As you see right here, see how to the wide side of the field, there is a little bit of a window that I could throw it over there, but it's really not there. The reason we the reason we run this to the wide side of the field is let's say they don't base align and press. So in this example right here, this is just a pressed cover two coverage. And what you're going to notice is this corner route actually does a much better job at being able to get over the top of the defender. Now, another thing that I did want to also point out is let's say that they call cover two and they don't press. So let's say they call cover two and they literally just call stock cover two. What you're going to notice here is he's going to play the corner out really well. So we're going to need to check down to our tight end and take our five to seven yards. It's one of the most high level reads you can make in Madden is knowing when to consistently check down to your tight end route. Now, if they were to run a hard flat out of a cover two coverage, you're going to see that hard flat will take the tight end and then we're going to be able to throw this corner out. The last coverage that I did want to go over in terms of uh, understanding why stick is a very, very valuable play in your offense is understanding how this play actually will work against a 30 yard cloud flat and a five yard curl flat. This is also known as a double Mabel coverage. Now, if they are base aligning and they're backing off their outside defenders, this means that they are going to be tr probably trying to run what's known as a double Mabel coverage. That is essentially a low flat defender, a high flat defender, and then a safety over the top to protect against streaks. So what you're going to see from stick is this low flat defender will take the tight end. But the beauty is, again, that short corner route is going to get open to the sideline when they are running that double Mabel coverage. You're going to be able to throw that corner route underneath a 30-yard cloud flat, 
and it is one of the best routes in the game for that purpose because one of the most popular defenses in this game is to use this kind of double Mabel, and you can kind of throw right through the coverage. Stick is one of the best plays in your arsenal, and it's a play that you need to master, and that's why we broke it down first because it's one of the most powerful plays and really one of the entire reasons why you would run the West Coast playbook. In the next play breakdown, we're going to be taking a look at the play corner strike. One of the only weaknesses to the play stick in Madden 24 is its ability to beat cover two because the short corner is not going to be able to get over the top of a cloud flat defender when that flat cloud flat defender is pressed up. The corner strike is going to kind of solve that. And corner strike actually provides us a lot of different versatility options for how we want to attack a, a given defense. So the setup for this play is we are going to streak our slot receiver and again we're just going to basically quick hike uh, this play now what you're going to see is we're going to first start with that cover two coverage and we're going to go ahead and press up that cloud flat what you're going to notice with this cloud flat pressed is we are going to actually be able to throw this deeper corner route way over the top of that cloud flat and the only way they're going to be able to defend that cloud or that uh, that corner route is two real really two methods uh, one of them is a base aligned quarter and the second one is a backed off 30 yard cloud flat. Both of those coverages stick does a really good job of beating. So you see how this is kind of the if this then that system of this offense. So if they're running a lot of cover two and they're giving stick some problems, then you can go to corner strike and you can absolutely obliterate cover two with that deep corner route. So let me show you kind of what they're going to have to do and, and how this play works from a, a cover four drop perspective. I do think that cover four drop is probably the best strategy uh, for defending corner strike. And um, I'm going to give you kind of a little window in a way that you can beat it as well within the same uh, basic play breakdown. So what you're going to see is against corner strike, that outside quarter defender is going to do a really good job of taking away the corner route when he goes to the sideline. And so it's it's really not that open. This is one of the um, drawbacks, if you will, to running your bunch to the wide side of the field. However, all we need to do uh, with this play to make it super, super good against cover four is we're just going to motion the running back out and we're going to put him on a streak. This simple motion out of the running back on a streak is going to clear out the cover four defender on the left side. And we're going to be able to throw this C route again and again and again underneath that outside quarter. Let me show you real quick. If we tried to do that without motioning out the defender and or the, the running back, what you'll see is sometimes you actually can throw this, but it's a lot more tight of a window and it's harder to catch that consistently against that defense. If you wanted to kind of continue to keep your disguise, you might try uh, go ahead and streaking your running back out of the backfield. I think he gets in his route a little bit too uh, short, although as you see right here, it is still kind of open. So just kind of keep that in mind. The C route to the left is a great read if they are indeed running a baseline press cover four. But if they're running a baseline press cover four or a baseline press cover three, you're probably not going to be running corner strike because corner strike is best against cover two. Corner strike is also really, really good against cover two man, which we're going to show you. Uh, we're going to show you right here. So uh, cover two man, the stock shading of cover two man is to shade inside and underneath with the streak to the slot receiver combined with the fact that you have a C route on the left and a corner route on the right. You have several different options at which you can beat the cover two man coverage. The first option that you have for beating cover two man is the C route on the left hand side. It's one of the best routes in this game for getting consistent separation against man coverage. Please note that the corner strike C route is a little bit different than the hot route master C route. It is also a little bit different than the C route that is found in the play double post out of the Indianapolis Colts offensive playbook. The other thing that you're going to see is a lot of times this streak will actually beat um, this coverage over the top. However, as you can see, the deep halves actually did a pretty good job of kind of pinching uh, pinching to the middle of the field. In, in some situations, people will actually put those outside defenders on outside thirds. So that is something else that we want to kind of, you know, just be aware of. You're kind of reading the deep half defender. If the corner route on the right-hand side does pull, um, you'll see here, this corner route does a little better job at beating man, in my opinion. Um, it, it, specifically, it does a better job of beating press man-to-man -man coverage than the stick corner route. So if you get man coverage, you have the corner route to the right, you have the corner route to the left. And then let's say, for example, that they kind of I'm trying to think how they would actually have to shade. But basically, these deep halves, let's say they go a little bit more out toward the sideline in the situation where they might go a little bit out toward the sideline. If we wait on this, 
a lot of times you can hit this over the top, and I'm not getting quite the animation that I want, unfortunately, not exactly sure why, but just understand that, let's say, you know, again, you know, let's say you're playing press man to man, and this is just to kind of simulate like outside thirds. We're going to put these two cloud flats to the safeties. So there's nobody in the middle of the field, basically. And so what you'll see here is now you can throw this streak up the seam because your deep corner and your C route are able to pull those outside thirds from the safety position. So uh, a really, really good play if they, if they don't have any safety help over the top. Now, the other thing that I wanted to go over in this setup breakdown is another adjustment that a lot of people like to do against bunch is they love to play man-to-man -man coverage on the bunch side, and then they're going to essentially play a cover three on the left. The way we're going to counter this is, again, with this just motion out running back streak. The beauty of the motion out running back streak is if they put that defender on the left-hand side in an outside third on the solo wide receiver, you're going to see that he's going to go to the running back, and we're going to be able to throw the C route for an easy gain against the defense. Corner Strike is one of the best plays in the entire game because of its ability to consistently beat cover two, the one coverage that Stick struggles against, and its ability to create some combos on the solo wide receiver side that allow you to really take advantage of the different defenses that your opponent is going to bring out. One of the best ways to beat man coverage in Madden 24 is through utilizing the play deep attack. And in this video, um, in, this, in this breakdown here of this play, we're going to show you how to use it to beat man coverage. Again, you've got to have a plan and a system for being able to beat man coverage. If you don't, they'll just run man-to-man -man coverage all game long on you, literally all game long. So how are we going to beat man-to-man -man coverage out of the play deep attack? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put our running back on a wheel route. We are going to put our tight end on a zig route. We're going to streak our uh, outside, or I'm sorry, our slot receiver, and then we're going to drag our outside bunch receiver. So you see here, this is the setup that we like to use. A very, very good setup for attacking man coverage, and it actually creates really good spacing on the field. So the first read that we have against man coverage, if you ever see man coverage on your field and they are playing that against the running back, you can throw the running back wheel oftentimes for a one-play score if they don't have any safety help over at the top. This is very good for coverages such as cover one robber or even cover zero because both of those coverages, the, the help, if you will, is in the middle of the field. So it leaves the running back isolated with the linebacker. Whether that linebacker is faster than the running back or not, I find to make really no difference. And this is going to force them to have to make specific adjustments to defend this route. The first adjustment that you're likely to see somebody make if they want to stay in man coverage is they will probably put a they will probably put a deep middle third defender over the top or I'm sorry a deep half defender over the top. So if they put the deep half defender over the, uh, the over the top of the wheel, then what you want to look for here is your bat your drag. Um, drag routes in Madden 24 are one of the best routes in the entire game for being able to consistently attack man coverage because the rat catch animations are so good this in this game that they're going to allow you to get a lot of separation if your opponent does decide you know that we want to run some man coverage on you. The other read that you have is your little tight end whip. Uh, tight end zigs are one of the best ways. Zigs in general are one of the best ways to beat man coverage, and tight end zigs are even better because they are, they are unbumpable routes, and so they're going to get better separation against man coverage. So you have your zig um, that you can utilize to, to beat man coverage, and so if you think through what are some of the adjustments your opponent is likely to put on the field to stop this route combo, they're going to probably put a deep half on the left-hand side. They're obviously going to have to put a hard flat on the right to stop the, the tight end uh, the tight end whip, and then they're going to have to also use her over the middle and basically take this drag route. So there's a lot of adjustments, and obviously they are um, only really rushing three people. And because of that, it is now going to give us an opportunity here where we can actually have time in the pocket to wait on this post route. That is a very good route against man coverage. We're just going to pass lead that inside. And as you can see, we get a big play against man coverage. This is also a very significant route combination because one of the other very, very popular ways people like to defend bunch essentially is what you're seeing on your screen right here. Um, the only thing that might be slightly different is obviously they're going to use her here. And it, it is kind of interesting, you know, what would they put the right side on the, on the field? If they're going to play zone, they're probably going to play a roll coverage over the bunch side where we have a deep half, a cloud, and a vert hook. Um, if they're going to play man, then obviously they might just man lock the backside. Again, it's, it's kind of hard to predict, but this is one of the more popular zone coverages that you're going to see if you're a bunch player. The reason I'm showing this is because 
this outside third defender when you have the wheel route that outside third has to respect the wheel route and so you're going to be able to throw this post route right in this little pocket that streak that slot receiver clears out the deep zones and you're able to throw that in the middle of the field super super effective play against um, man coverage and it can also do a really good job against zone coverage real quick we'll just kind of walk through really one other zone coverage i wanted to show which is cover four Again, you just have that high low, and a lot of this post route is so good. The post route got so much better when set feet lead came into the game. Set feet lead makes this post route almost unguardable, and they have to use her the post route. The reason that it is significant that they have to use her the post route is because as we start to get different adjustments, they are going to take their user out of the middle of the field because their user has to go defend the post route. Well, the cool part about your running back being on a wheel route is your running back route is going to pull the uh, outside zone defenders, and then we can check down to our little drag route over the middle. Deep attack's one of the best plays in the game for attacking man coverage. The next play we're gonna be going over in this ebook is deep corner. Deep corner is one of the tried and true money plays in Madden, has been one of the best plays in Madden for a really long time. And there's actually some really cool ways to use deep corner to counter some of the most popular defenses that people are gonna be running against your gun bunch offense. So what we're going to be doing uh, for this setup is we're just going to streak our outside bunch receiver, and then we are going to uh, wheel route our running back. And essentially what we have here now is we have the corner route, instead of coming from the outside bunch receiver, the corner, corner route is now coming uh, from the slot receiver. The reason this is better is it is better uh, for certain situations with mainly primarily baseline press cover four, baseline press cover three, really any underneath zone, this is going to do a really good job. The only zone that this is not going to beat is cover two, okay? It's going to be cover four. It's going to be cover three. It's going to beat man coverage a little bit better than some of our other route combinations. Obviously, it's a little bit more of a setup to it. Um, but again, the only thing it's not going to beat is cover two. But if you play cover two against bunch, there's a lot of openings. Uh, and we're going to get into some more of those later on in this ebook. So the first read here on this play against if you see man coverage, this is the purpose of putting the wheel route on the field. The wheel route kills man coverage. So that automatically eliminates their ability to run man coverage to the left side of the screen, this little wheel route in route combo. Both of those routes beat man to man. The other thing you can do against man coverage is this route to R1 is a sharp cutting corner route that is going to do a pretty good job at being able to attack man to man coverage. So you have, you have some options um, if they do decide to run man coverage. Now, one of the other things that you're seeing a lot right now is, again, a zone coverage that defense is going to basically look something like this. And then this guy is probably going to be an outside third or something. The reason this is important uh, to go over is because most of the time, if they're playing you in man coverage, they're not going to have a deep outside cloud flat. And so that's where, you know, this could be a really, really good route for your offense. Okay. Now, let's talk about zone coverage. As I said, this is going to do a really good job against cover four and cover three. And the reason why is because we have a sharp corner. The sharp corners get underneath these outside quarters and outside thirds. So as you can see there, super easy little read. And we're able to beat cover four drop. We're also going to do a really good job against cover three. And this cover three in particular is going to have a curl flat defender. So cover three with the curl flat, you see, able to attack because it's a sharp corner route. It's not going vertical enough to be able to challenge the outside third defender. Okay. Doesn't go into his grid. Let's talk about cover four. So uh, if we were running this against cover four drop and it's, let's say it's baseline press, baseline press will defend it a little bit better, but it's kind of like stick. And that was actually a little bit of a late throw. It's actually very similar to the, how we throw the route, uh, throw the stick corner route. The reason that we're going to do it this way is just because we want to keep our bunch. Basically, it will make everything look as, as similar as possible. So that being said here, we're just going to freeform this down. You want to freeform it down. You see how it brings him back to the ball and it brings it toward more towards the sideline. So we're kind of throwing that at about four five o'clock. Um, if your joystick on your controller was, was a clock. Okay. So that's how I would throw it against cover. Uh, cover four is harder than cover three. Uh, actually, Look at cover three out there just bagging. Huh, that's actually crazy. Um, baseline press cover three actually kind of got a little baggy there. Let me show Let me show that again. That might have been a little fluke. 
I'll show you one other little trick uh, to make this work a little better. Yeah, that's more what we're normally going to see. So I probably threw that just slightly early. One other thing you can do with this, if you're not really concerned about making your play look the same and you just want to have a consistent, this is going to win against cover four, this is going to win against cover three every time. All you have to do is motion this outside receiver outside. This is going to just simply clear out the defense a lot better. And so you'll see here this outside quarter going to go way to the sideline. And this is wide open for an easy game. So that's a very simple uh, little tra uh, little trick and little tactic. And the only reason why, it just it's because now, if you think about it, this guy is running his streak route on or outside the numbers. So because he is on or outside the numbers, the outside third and the outside quarter defenders have to respect the verticalness of his route over the corner route. So that is how you can run deep corner against uh, cover three and cover four. Now, this is going to set up how I like to run deep corner against cover two. So real quick, I did want to go over this. If you play a standard uh, cover two coverage, the corner route, it can get over the top of a press cloud, but a backed off cloud or kind of even just a standard cloud is going to be a little bit more difficult to, to, uh, to get over the top of. So let's say they did like a baseline press cover two, right? This defense right here, you should be able still to throw this. I'm pretty sure if I freeform this up, I can throw this over the top of a baseline press cover two cloud. The reason that's important is because we can't really do that with stick. So this is slightly, uh, it's a slightly deeper uh, corner route than stick is, even though it's still a sharp corner route. The reason that's important is because if they're, if they're, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't call this play unless they are pressing their corners. Okay. So here it is again. And this time I'm not going to freeform it. And you see that the cloud's able to roll back. Now I could have, of course, checked down to the tight end, which I would really recommend that you do. That being said, if they are in a defense like this, and then let's go ahead and throw this guy into a hard flat. You're going to notice here that now that cloud flat gets a lot more depth and there's really nowhere for me to be able to throw that cloud or that corner out. So if they're kind of backing off their outside corners, this is your cue that it is probably some type of cover to coverage. So uh, this is going to lead into our uh, kind of alternate setup of deep corner, one that I really like. We're going to come back. Uh, we're going to put our we're going to put our outside or our solo wide receiver on a comeback route. We're going to block our running back. This route combo is going to take a little bit more time. We're going to motion this skinny post outside, and then we are going to drag our tight end. Okay, this is a scissor concept on the right, and then we just have a simple high low check down read on the left. You could streak your slot receiver. Okay, you could certainly do that. Um, but let's show you what this does against cover two. You're going to see that this is going to split the safeties. And the reason that I like taking that, uh, I like utilizing that corner route is because that corner route really pulls the deep half defender to the sideline and it really opens up the middle of the field a lot more. So if you're playing somebody that's running a lot of cover two and you know, you want this to kind of look like some of your other plays, this looks like the motion out deep corner setup, but now what we're trying to do is take advantage of the fact that we have a skinny post coming from the wide side, and even the mid read, even though he, even though the mid read did match that deep, uh, that deep post route, he didn't play the deep post route. Now I wanted to show you the same route combination with a slot receiver streak. So the reason I wanted to show you the same route combination with a slot receiver streak is just so that you can see that the mid read is going to match the streak and then you can throw this underneath. And I'm actually going to take the mid read off the field to kind of simulate what it would look like if your opponent is double mabling. It would probably look something like what you're seeing on your screen here. And then obviously they would have their user. The reason that's important is, of course, if they're user, users of the post, you got to check down to your tight end or, you know, maybe scramble with your quarterback. But assuming that the user stays down on the tight end, you see this is still going to be a really big play and potentially a touchdown with that slot receiver on a streak. 
The other thing that the streak does, even though it is a little bit of a tell that we are running deep corner, the other thing that a streak does is let's say you guess wrong and it is a cover three or cover four. If it is a cover three or cover four, this play becomes kind of almost like a different version of double post. And what you'll see is this post will come underneath right in that little basket. And because of set feet lead, we can make that throw very, very easily. It's going to do the same basic thing against cover four as well. So this is a uh, kind of an alternate setup of deep corner that's going to do a really, really good job of attacking the cover two coverage. The next play we're going to be going over is wide receiver post. Wide receiver post is a little bit of a, a kind of a versatile uh, play. And I would recommend for this specific play setup that you have some type of either slot apprentice or hot route master that will make this play a little bit better. The reason we are using wide receiver post is this is another way that we can counter our opponent choosing to run cover two. So a lot of people like to run double Mabel this year. They just, they just do. That's the bottom line. It's a good way to play zone coverage. And um, it, it just it does. It stops these flood concepts. So what we're going to do with this is we are going to put our running back on a wheel route. And then we're going to take either one of these receivers on the right-hand side. And we are going to put them on a corner route. So it kind of looks like corner strike. Now, with that slot receiver, you can really do whatever you want. I personally like to put him on an in route so that it slows down that read because he's going to kind of be a, a check down defender. I'll show you something else we can do in just a minute with this. But what you're going to see here is this uh, deep post is going to kill and split the safeties for that cover two beater. OK, so we're going to do a really good job of, of beating and bombing cover two coverage against something like this. Now, another thing that we can do kind of an alternate setup. And again, this is why you can have the slot apprentice really on anybody that you want is we can put the uh, slot receiver on a corner route. And then we're just going to drag this outside bunch receiver. You could you could motion him out and you could not motion him out. Kind of honestly up to you. Uh, the reason I like to motion him out is because it's going to give him more time if we do indeed need to check down. Because if they don't run cover two, this play is really not that good. Okay, it's good against man and really nothing else. But what you'll see here, here's cover two again. You see we get the same result. It pulls that safety out and we're able to attack this. Now, if you don't have a slot apprentice and you still want to run this concept, you still can. The way that you run this concept without a slot apprentice is uh, a little bit different than with a slot apprentice, but you can, like I said, still run the concept. We're going to motion this guy out. We're going to put him on a comeback. We're still going to wheel our running back. And then what I like to do with this is, again, put that in route there. You can leave a drag if you want, but I like to put the in route. And what you're going to see now is that comeback will pull that half defender, and then this guy will be able to run up the seam. And as you can see, we're able to really destroy, uh, take the top of the defense if they are indeed running a cover two coverage. Now, I do want to show this. Uh, let's say they run like cover four. So if they run anything that's not cover two, so if they run cover four, if they run cover three, if they, basically, if they have a middle of the field defender, it's really this 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 route comp, this post is not going to be open. See how it, it gets played very well by the safeties in that situation. The same thing with cover three. Cover three is a middle of the field close coverage. A lot of people um, use cover three to take away posts. This is another example. You can kind of throw this in that seam. That's a super high level throw and is definitely a set feet lead throw. I'll show this out of cover two or uh, I'll show this out of this defense. So what you can do with this, this actually is not a bad read, but basically let's say their cover three looks like what I just showed you on the screen there. The running back will pull that middle third and you can throw this right there. That's a super high level read. Obviously it ignores a user. If they have a user defender, that's another factor. Um, but that is a, a read. It's a very high level read you can make against cover three because the, the middle third defender is coming He's having to move horizontally to get to the middle of the field from a split safety pre-snap alignment. Okay, uh, let's talk about this play for cover two man. Uh, this play is absolutely incredible for cover two man as well. And this is, uh, again, what are the weaknesses of the main money plays in bunch? Cover two and cover two man. Those are the two weaknesses. This play really does a good job of kind of like beating both of those coverages at a high, very high level. 
So what you're going to see here, here's cover to man. Watch that post route and that wheel route. That post route actually kind of got bagged. That's really more of a route running thing. Um, a lot of times he's going to get that separation over the middle of the field. So just keep that in mind. Another thing that you have uh, against cover to man on this play. Whoops, let me do that. So another thing that you have against cover to man on this play is your, uh, your running back wheel when he cuts up field right there. You can kind of fit that in between that half defender. You also are going to have, of course, your drag as a check down read. And then if your post route wins, it's a, it's a, it's a touchdown. If your post route wins, it's a touchdown. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where in, in this year's game and really all of the next-gen games, it's kind of a routes don't beat man every time all the time. But when they get the right release, they do. So it's kind of, again, it's a little bit of a read there. But uh, really, really high-level play, very, very simple. Now, the second setup of wide receiver post is kind of a little bit more of a quick snap setup. All we're going to do is just drag, uh, put our running back on an in route. Now, the purpose of this is kind of a blitz beater, and we're also getting a nice little flood concept on the left-hand side of the screen. So what you're going to see is this is really pretty good against man coverage. If you look at that crosser uh, to the circle receiver, the circle receiver is going to do a really, really good job of consistently being able to beat man. So the, dra the running back in routes this year, a lot of them are going to beat man. Look how badly... Uh, that circle receiver was able to cook the man coverage. Really, really good man beating route. A lot of people, like I said, they're going to put this guy on the left in an outside third. If they put that guy on the left in an outside third, that post will still clear out that third, and you can throw this underneath that outside third defender. So super, super simple play here. This is a little bit more of a blitz beater or, you know, just kind of a, a, a change of pace. You do have your tight end blocking in this setup. That's kind of the main purpose of the setup is just to get that tight end in pass protection. And then as you see here, you have a high low on the left hand side of the formation. So we're 40 minutes into this ebook and we have not even gone over one of the best plays in Madden history, the play verticals. For this setup of verticals, what we're going to do is we're going to zig route our tight end and then we are going to take our running back and a couple different things we can do with him. What I like to do, to keep it very, very simple, we're just going to block him. This is a super uh, great horizontal stress, uh, stretch and stress on the defense. It's a really good way to beat man coverage out of verticals as well. You're going to see this tight end zig route. Again, just a really good route to be able to beat man coverage. And what the purpose of this setup right here is to make them have to respect the fact that we can throw the ball into the vertical hook area of the field. So if your opponent likes to run uh, double Mabel and they don't really see the reasoning like they, they, you know, because we've been hitting the cover two and they start to put this middle linebacker in the deep blue to stop your wide receiver post setup or whatever. This is going to do a really, really good job of kind of taking away or attacking that vulnerable area, which is that yellow zone area. So you'll see right here, it just kind of sits in that little pocket. That was actually a terrible uh, way to run that route. Let me show you that again. That was uh, unfortunate. But basically, they put that middle linebacker in the deep third. I'm going to pinch my D-line so they don't run into each other. That's more of a practice mode thing. In game, it's not as bad. But you see, wide open, easy read. Just gets in a super soft spot against that coverage. Now, let's say, you know, obviously they have underneath zones and all that kind of stuff that they can do to stop this. So how will we attack it if they stop that? All we're going to be able to – all we're going to have to do, if you look to your uh, crosser, you're going to throw your crosser. You're going to pass lead that down and you're going to actually catch it. Um, you're going to possession catch it. It's super important when you're throwing the verticals crosser this year. You need, if you're not careful, you'll throw an interception. So super, super important here. You want to uh, pass lead it down. So you'll see once he crosses that quarter, pass lead down, and I keep I keep running him out of the, out of the way. But basically pass lead down, and then you're going to possession catch it. Okay, let me show it to you one more time. Hopefully we'll actually catch the ball. And you see possession catch up. Okay. The other thing that's really uh, underrated about this route combination, one of the things that a lot of people like to do, let's say you're running like cover four drop. Uh, let's say you're running like baseline press cover four drop. They'll just man this tight end up and then they'll play their, um, they'll play their, their standard coverages, right? So obviously they're going to have to take the crosser if they decide to do a, an adjustment like that. So because they're going to have to take the crosser, if you look at the tight end, tight end now gets in the soft spot and the zig route beats man coverage. 
Now, the second setup of verticals is the more standard meta setup of verticals. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the running back on an in route, and we are going to snap the ball and make a read. This crosser is really, really good, and it is really this this play as a whole is really just good every year. And if you just put the running back, you can put the running back on a Texas, you can put the running back on a streak, um, but just a simple in route does the job. And if you get man-to-man -man coverage, uh, a lot of times this uh, deep fade route, if they actually are playing man coverage, not a outside third, he will beat the press. If he doesn't beat the press, don't throw the ball to him, right? But you see there, he's able to win on the press. We can throw a rack catch and burn cover one over the top. So what do they have to do? They have to put a deep half defender over there. They have to start to, you know, counter what they're doing. And so this is where, let's say you're playing, you know, you, you, you're playing someone and they're running a little cover three or cover four, um, really whatever they're running. This is where we get a high low between the tight end and the running back. So if the yellow zone jumps to the running back, you're going to throw the tight end, which is what you will probably almost always throw. The tight end, the tight end vertical is super good. And it, it just it just it beats a, a plethora a plethora of coverages. So you see here this time, see how I can throw him right in the seam area of the field with set feet lead. Set feet lead makes this play a thousand times better. Another reason why you need to have set feet lead. But let's talk about maybe some other situations that people might do. One of the more popular uh, defenses, like I said, is double Mabel. And a way they might want to run their double Mabel is they might man up the tight end. So if they man up the tight end, they have to use her the slot receiver. Uh, absolutely, they have to use her the slot receiver. So because they have to use her the slot receiver, it leaves the running back open over the middle of the field. Obviously, if they go to the running back, then throw your slot receiver, right? But what you'll see here is the running back gets open kind of in this pocket. You see everything just vacates in the middle of the field, and the running back is wide open. Verticals is a great, great play for attacking the blitz. Let me explain why. Uh, here I'm going to just kind of set up uh, kind of a, a makeshift version of a pretty meta way that people like to blitz, and it's essentially this right here. Their users in the middle of the field, what does their user have to guard? Their user has to guard the verticals crosser. So because their, vertical, their user has to run with R1, then you can throw this tight end right in that little seam, and this is why this play is so freaking good. Very simple setup out of verticals but I think a very necessary setup for this offense. The last play we're going to be breaking down in this ebook is Mesh Post. Mesh Post is a classic. It is good every single year. It is great this year. It is such a good play. It's going to allow you to beat a plethora of coverages, and let's just get into Mesh Post. So the first setup of Mesh Post is a quick hike play. I'm sure you're so shocked that we want to try to quick hike out a bunch, but basically um, this is a very good setup of Mesh Post. All we're going to do is we're going to streak the slot receiver and we're going to snap the ball. What you're going to see is this is going to do a good job of attacking man coverage. First things first, if they – I'm actually doing a terrible job of free-forming wheel routes lately. If they play man coverage, all you got to do is throw your wheel route. Okay, how do you throw your wheel route? You're going to freeform it up into the outside. So you see here, he kind of beats him. We want to throw a, a touch pass. We don't want to bullet it, um, but I like to throw a little touch pass over the top. And as you can see, get a really, really good completion. Now, uh, I will say this post route has been better in years past at being uh, beating man coverage. And regs, it's not going to be as probably good. But you see, when he cuts over the middle, you're going to try to throw with an inside pass lead right on the cut. And oftentimes it's going to do a good job of beating man coverage. Now, the other cool part about this setup right here is if they have a middle third defender, that streak is going to pull that middle third defender out of the out of the way. So you don't really have to worry about a middle third defender. And then the running back wheel is going to pull any kind of outside third defender. So it's going to create this big opening. Um, and you'll see it right about there where we can throw this route consistently against man coverage. So guess what they have to do with their user? They have to user it. Okay. So because they have to user uh, this route, it's, they're going to need kind of what would basically be a mid read defender. So they need a mid read defender to user the mesh post post. And then we have this tight end on this flat route. The flat route pulls out any zones on that side. And it also, as you can see, that's where you have your backside check down your drag route, which which is super, super good against man coverage. Why? Because of the rack catch animations. This play is so simple, and it literally beats everything in this game. You, you, you pick a coverage. This play right here beats it. Every coverage in the game, this play beats it. You see here, here's cover four. Yellow zone's coming underneath, so we're going to throw the post and behind it. Very, very simple. 
and it's just a great money play that I would I would be doing you a disservice if we didn't break down mesh post. Okay, um, so very simple. Just simply streak the slot receiver, and then everything is at your disposal. Um, please don't underestimate the power of that drag route. Uh, that tight end tight end flat is is very important uh, for this play because the tight end flat pulls out any zones. So like let's say they're running the double Mabel. Okay. This is a great play for double Mabel. Uh, the reason why it's such a good play for double Mabel is because we have so many throwing lanes and guess what they have to use her the post. So even if they have a yellow zone right here, which typically it'll be a vertical hook, it probably won't be a hook curl, be a vertical hook. And let's say they use her the post route. The running back wheel pulls the flat on the left. The tight end flat pulls the flat on the right. And what it does, watch this drag, is going to time up and you're going to throw it right in that window right there. At that point at which if they are still there with you, if they are still if they are still there with their user when you go to throw that drag, then you want to be looking at your uh, post. So I'll give you an example of them kind of defending the drag. So you'll see right here, I would want to throw the drag right about here. They're there. So I'm throwing the post. I got the running back wheel to clear out any kind of deep zones. Mesh post is absolutely money. Now we're going to be going over the red zone uh, route combos that I like to use out of the gun bunch in the West Coast playbook. And we're going to be talking about mesh spot. What makes mesh spot so good is if you look closely at this R1 route, it's, it's like a slant and a drag in one route. So if we run this route combo, you're going to see that this is going to do a pretty good job of beating man coverage. But the more important thing about this route and, and why it's relevant for our purposes here today is because we are going to actually be able to, like he's not going to stop running his route because he's not going to hit the back of the end zone. That is super, super important when you're trying to find red zone offense in this year's game. So what we're going to do uh, with this play, a couple different setups that I like to utilize. The first one is really simple. We're just going to put the running back on a ghost route. And if you watch how this plays against cover two, uh, and then from there, whatever you want to do on the right, okay, whatever you want to do on the right, if you want to do a, a zig flat combo, perfectly fine. If you, whatever you want to do on the right. I mainly just want to break down the R1 route. So what you'll see is against cover two, see how they're going to sit on the ghost and we can throw this in the back of the end zone. That is so, 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 so important because what are people doing in the red zone this year? What you're seeing a lot of people do in the red zone is they're basically running a defense that looks like this and then they are going to probably have these defenders in uh, hard flats and then obviously they're going to be used right over the middle of the field. So everything over the middle of the field is really going to be hard to throw consistently. So... That's where this ghost route becomes so valuable because just by using a running back ghost route, you'll see the cloud flat defenders sit on the ghost route and we're able to throw this in the back of the end zone for a potential one play score. Now I want to talk about what do you do if you're watching this video and you don't have the running back apprentice ability. What you want to do to kind of create the same basic effect without uh, compromising everything else that we have going for us on this play is we are going to motion this receiver inside. We're gonna put him on a hitch. Then what I like to do is I'm actually going to uh, put my running back on an in route and I'm gonna curl the right side bunch receiver. This setup is kind of one of those things, if you don't have the, the ability to put a ghost right on the field, this is a very, very good setup. What you're going to notice is this hitch is going to kind of serve the same basic purpose. It's not as good. And you see, they can kind of get over there. So it's not as good as the ghost route. The ghost route is king. The ghost route is the best way to do this. But I did want to try to give you something if you don't have um, the ability to put a running back ghost route on there. And really, I mean, it could even be as simple as, um, I'm trying to think. But basically, the the, the hitch a lot of times does uh, pull so we'll see if we can get this hitch to pull. A lot of times he does. We're going to high point it, possession catch it, in the back of the end zone kind of idea. That's what we're trying to do. Um, but that's that's one setup. That's one setup we can go to, okay? And the other thing about that specific setup, this time I'm going to just leave this and, and just see if the in route can pull the cloud flat in enough. I actually got matched, but I still kind of got it. Um, so anyway, that's a really, really good route combo for – uh, for the red zone, in my opinion. And then what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you another route combo that I like. This one is a little bit more, uh, this one's a little bit more man to man kind of centered. We're, we're kind of a specifically trying to attack man coverage. 
uh, with what we're going to show you here. And I think it's inside cross, not inside cross. Uh, we're going to do this out of verticals. So what we're going to do out of verticals is we are going to zig the tight end. We are going to zig the outside bunch receiver. And then the other two routes are kind of up to you. So you could put this slot on a slant route and block your running back. You could put your running back on a Texas route and, you know, maybe streak your slot. Uh, fading your slot is, is actually underrated. Um, but anyways, you could do what I like to typically do is this setup right here. Okay, it's kind of the same idea, but this is going to be much better against man-to-man. -man. So against man-to-man -man coverage, what we have is we have the zig route on both sides. If they are playing man-to-man -man coverage in the red zone, we are going to be able to beat them with this very simple uh, setup. Okay, now let's say, you know, let's say here we go to the right side and we have the tight end. Now the other reason why this is a very, very good uh, route combination is because let's say they're running the meta uh, defense down here in the red zone, which is for uh, for us going to be a blitz. Oftentimes you're going to get a five man, okay, uh, in the red zone this year. Oftentimes you're going to get this five man here, so they're going to curl, you know, do some do some curls here, uh, hook curl defenders, and then you know this guy might be on a flat if they're only going to send four, uh, but typically it's going to be something like this, okay. So what we're going to be able to do is because of this verticals crossing route and just the way this route runs, you could also get, I think, the same result from a slant route. The hook curl defender a lot of times doesn't cover the tight end. And you can actually possess and catch that. You actually covered it pretty well there. But a lot of times you can possess and catch that um, against, against what people like to do. Okay, so this is probably one of the best ways to uh, attack the meta that people are running defensively and, and that meta primarily being this idea of that we're going to be able to attack with this tight end zig once the yellow zones uh, suck inside to, to go defend the slant. So you see here again, watch the hook curl defender, boom, kind of stays in the middle and we're able to check down to that zig route. Now, the obvious answer, if you guys uh, are really trying to win Madden games is when you get down into the five yard line, run the ball. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Halfback sweep, halfback mid draw. And this is where I want to quickly um, run through my favorite shotgun run scheme, which is the tray open offset. So it's a couple clicks to the right here, and we're just going to run these run plays. I love these run plays. They're simple. Um, 56 trap, you get a pulling guard. It's basically quick base. Boom. And, and, and I just... Uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about here, but I just I really want to highlight that this tray open is really good, uh, and it's the most underrated formation in, in the West Coast playbook by far. People don't realize this counter run, super good little run here. Uh, and then you also, the, the last little bit of this is you have the read option. The beauty of the read option, it's going to be more like a, a an interior threat type of run. So you're just reading that read defender, and you see he stands up, so we're going to run the ball. And as you see, it's it, it's going to play more like an inside zone uh, type of run play. Super, super effective. And then uh, last but not least, if you want to audible down uh, out of this formation, you certainly can. You can audible down in the, into the single back doubles flex. I think the single back doubles flex is super good run because what we can do is we can use motion to, let's say they're in man coverage, we're going to isolate that right-hand side. And, you know, now we have a significant numbers advantage in the run game. And this is this is kind of the art of running the ball. So all in all, guys, the West Coast Offensive ebook, free ebook for you guys. Wanted to break this down, just kind of see if you guys enjoy the content. I think this is one of the best offenses in Madden this year. And we actually have a full more and even more in-depth version of this ebook than we went into today on our Patreon page. You can get access to that by being a member. Members get access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks as well as all of the updates to those ebooks. So I hope this offense helps you. And if you really want to get serious about your Madden game, I'd really encourage you to join the Patreon. You can sign up for just $10 and get access to a ton of different resources that are going to help you become a better Madden player. To sign up, head down to the description and click the link down below.